Okay, so welcome to the second video on complete and incomplete metric spaces. So I was just in the process of um, telling you about some uh, examples of incomplete metric spaces uh, when I got interrupted. So I was just about to tell you why, I believe, I was just about to tell you why uh, the real lines take away the rational numbers is an incomplete metric space. Well, if you take away the uh, rational, uh, if you take away the rational numbers, you get you certainly take away zero. So forget what else you take away. You certainly take away zero, which is a specific point here. The problem with that argument is that we can't use this exact version up here because all of these, all of these were rational numbers. Uh, one half, a third, a quarter. They were all rational numbers. So instead, we're going to have to construct a slightly cleverer sequence. So uh, that's construct the sequence xn which is equal to the square root of 2 divided by n. Those are all non-rational numbers now. Um, their limit in the real numbers, the, the limit of this in the real numbers is equal to 0 and uh, and it's convergent for the exact same argument as this is convergent, uh, sorry it's Cauchy for the exact same reason this is Cauchy. So if I uh, draw you a picture of what this sequence is we'll have a little bit of a moral discussion of it. So this sequence x is going to be equal to uh, the square root of 2 over 1 is going to be the first term so we get the square root of 2 then it's going to be the square root of 2 over 2 then it's going to be the square root of 2 over 3 square root of 2 over 4 etc and uh, you will if we draw our picture here we have 0 here which has been omitted and you start off at square root of 2 which is about here if uh, 1 which has been omitted is about there then the square root of 2 is approximately there uh, then uh, we go down to square root of 2 over 2 down here and uh, you go on the square root of 2 over 3 let's say is here and basically, the exact same argument as before holds uh, that all the terms are getting smaller, but they are all not going to ever, they're never ever going to get smaller than zero, and they're always going to be bounded by, if you go up to the term, uh, let's say x big n, then let's say the term x big n is here, then after that, all the terms after that are going to be within the interval 0 to x big n. And therefore, the maximum distance between any two terms in the sequence after x big n that you take is going to be less than uh, the distance between 0 and xn. So basically, we can just say the distance between 0 and xn uh, needs to be uh, less than epsilon if we want our Cauchy criterion to hold, i.e. we want to find a point big N uh, such that uh, the distance bet uh, between any two points in the series x little n and x little m such that x little n and x little m are past x big N so if we have x big N here then x little n are over here and x little m are over here they're on the other side of it they could indeed be equal to x big N uh, but basically the distance between them is going to be less than the distance between 0 and x n now clearly we are using the fact that um, the metric space r minus q is a sub uh, space of uh, the real line and we're therefore using the fact that the metric on here is inherited from the metric on here so because obviously we can't say what the distance between 0 and x big n is in here because 0 isn't a point in here so we're using the fact that it's inherited from here to say that the distance between x little n and x little m, which are x little n and x little m are in this metric space, that's going to be equal to the distance between, that's going to be less than or equal, sorry, less than, in fact, it's going to be strictly less than because, um, yeah, it's going to be strictly less than because uh, no point is ever going to get to zero. Uh, so it's going to be strictly less than the distance between zero and x big N, where we view this distance as acting in this bigger metric space R. And so if we make that less than epsilon, then we make this less than epsilon. And uh, since the distance between zero and x big N is just going to be the square root of two over big N, uh, which is just um, because this is just the modulus of 0 minus that and the modulus of that is just the square root of 2 over big N so we just make the square root of 2 over big N uh, less than epsilon so we pick the first big N the first big N which is a natural number so remember big N needs to be a natural number which is greater than the square root of 2 divided by epsilon and there you have it you, um, you can uh, find you give me an epsilon, I will find your big N such that past that big N, uh, if you pick any two points, the distance between them is less than epsilon, i.e. it does satisfy the Cauchy criterion. But of course, it converges down to zero in the metric space R, and zero is not in this metric space, therefore uh, it does not converge in this metric space. So there's another example of an incomplete metric space. 
final example, uh, which is important, which is the open interval uh, between A and B. Now this is uh, incomplete for the same reason as uh, our original example 0 to 1 was incomplete, because if we look at the sequence A plus 1 over n again, this old sequence xn is equal to A plus 1 over n, all of those terms will be uh, will be in this metric space, providing, of course, that the distance between A and B is greater than 1. Of course, if if A plus 1 over N is over here, then it's not going to... Uh, sorry, A plus 1 over 1 is over there, then you're going to have to adapt it a bit. You're going to have to, um, for instance, if A plus 1 over 2 is over here, then uh, you're going to have to say A plus... We'll take the sequence 1A plus 1. 1 over m plus 1, so that we start at this term here. But providing uh, providing we don't have that silliness going on, uh, we'll, we'll just assume without loss of generality that uh, all of these terms of this sequence are within this interval a, b. Uh, then this sequence is Cauchy for the same reason as we've seen before, and it converges to a in the larger metric space r, uh, so uh, it doesn't converge within this metric space. So the open interval a, b with the usual Euclidean metric is is incomplete as well. So there are a few easy examples, uh, all subsets of the real numbers which are incomplete. And the reason is that it's very easy to find uh, subsets of the real numbers which are incomplete. Uh, it's more difficult, as I say, to prove a subset, uh, uh, prove a metric space is complete than incomplete. And it's even more difficult if we're doing it on a metric space for which we have very little intuition uh, rather than the real numbers for which we have a lot of intuition.